historian, John Lanza, historian. Uh, he sent me a copy of the book, and I said, yeah, I think this would be a great thing to do on Veterans Day. So yeah, here we are. Uh, it's great to be here. It's great to be here, especially since it's Veterans Day. In Boston, I visited my, my uncle, who's my, the only other person in that family of eight who's still around. And I asked him, hey, Uncle Willie, what happened to you during the war? <laughs> Simple question. Another famous question. Simple thing. And I knew he had been missing in action, but I never knew the story. He's never talked about it. He lived upstairs in my house, he and his three daughters. And he starts telling me, and I'm saying, how you have told me the story? And he, you know, and, and he would only tell me some of the story. He says, I can't tell you what happened after I was shot down. I said, why? He said, I signed something where I could never talk about it. And so he did tell me what happened before he got shot down. That, you know, the pilot got everyone off the plane, and the pilot, the pilot got killed. He was a real hero, and, and he crashed into a mountainside. So that perked my interest, so I started doing research. Italian campaign. I've written, read probably 90 books. I've read every book there is to read on the Italian campaign, and uh, and, and related kind of books, and a lot of books on on, on aircraft, because I was trying to understand. I was trying to be in the period, and uh, then uh, finding and learning about the crew is a time-consuming process, and of course, finding and learning about the partisans is. We're talking about finding people in another country in a little village and you know working it out. Four years later, <laughs> I have a book. As I researched more and, and gave him more, he would remember more. This book could not have happened without an uncle with a memory like mine. I have never met anyone with a memory like my uncle and an ability to tell a story. So we bonded for, for four years and I published this, I published this book. Shot Down Over Italy is a true story about a seven-man crew of a B-25 Mitchell bomber that was shot down over Nazi-occupied Italy during World War II. It's a story of courage and survival in a country torn apart by the chaos of war that shows the human spirit shining through despite the inhumanity of war. People were risking their life to help my uncle. But why did I do this? I was fascinated by what he was telling me. And I hadn't even scratched the surface. My uncle wouldn't tell me what happened after you evaded the enemy. So I did a lot of research, and I found out that a lot of classified records between 1940 and 1970 during the Clinton administration, there was a need to declassify them. And the result was a policy in 95 to declassify permanent historical records of 25 years old or older that no longer posed a national security threat. Among those were escape and evasion reports, the thing he signed where he could never talk about it. The missing air crew reports where they collect information after someone shot down. You know, they, they, in this case, there were three people they interviewed, and, um, and, and they try to piece things together. And then they, as, they, as the, the, the people are, are, are evaded, the enemy come back, they're interviewed again by intelligence and it's incorporated. And then I got every one of his combat missions. So every single mission he went on, who was on the plane and what happened, I got all of those. As I got more of this, he remembered more. And so we were very much in the period. I mean, we were really in the period. So when I showed him that he could talk about it, then it opened up the doors. True story about a seven-man crew shot down. It shows how they got to Italy because I tried to capture the period of what they were like, every one of the crew members, what they were like before they went to war, what training they went through. Fascinating training.
And then what happened, uh, what they were doing there in Italy, and like the chaos, I have a chapter about the history of Italy leading up so you can understand what was going on. I mean, we, we had Mussolini led, led, led into war. He had no concept that Italy was going to be a battleground from September of 43 to uh, April of, of, of uh, 45, where a lot of civilians would be, would be killed in the process and reprisals and bombs dropping on homes and that type of thing. This is the plane. This is Bombardier and the fellows from South Dakota. This is the pilot from Indiana, the co-pilot from Philadelphia, the navigator. Now this is the uh, Denny, the um, engineer, and he had to know everything about the plane, you know, because the, the engineer does. The navigator has to know where they are at all times. Of course, the pilot, the co-pilot. This is the guy that has to zero in to do the bombing. He's the radio man and the waste gunner, and my uncle is back here as the rear gunner to make sure no one's coming up from the rear to, to do something with them. But, I talk in the book and how they were trained. They were trained in their specialties, and they were also trained to operate as a team. There were 24 planes on this mission. He's dropping, he's using a, a Norton bomb site to site for all 24 planes. What happened is, my uncle, when he landed, he he landed in the field, and two kids came over. Americano, Americano, and the and the and the, and, and the, um, and the farmer said you know, he could hear the Germans coming for him. And um, he, 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 my uncle says you could tell German vehicles, you could tell German planes. It was easy. They sounded different. And and so he took off up the hill, and he hit. And then there were two young guys because he could see them. They couldn't see him. They were shooting and yelling something. And, and he, you know, he had been in the infantry before he went into the Air Corps, so he was good at that type of thing. And uh, the next day, he got went down to the farmer, and at that point, we wore the farmer who who would go to the help on the, the underground, the town resistance, the partisans, and um, and then and then then he he was going to, going to be helped by the partisans. So four of the people were helped by the partisans because they got to him first. Two of them, the fascists and Germans got to, they went to prison camp. Feel good. But partisans were part of the Italian resistance. They helped the airmen who were shot down. Two of them and their families, Goffredo Seri and his family, and Riccardo Beccatini and his family, they risked their lives to help these guys. Riccardo really risked his life on a couple of occasions that I talk about in the book. To understand the Italian campaign, in 1943, first of all, the Americans never wanted to go in through Italy. We were always in through northern France to go across to get to Germany that way. Churchill wanted to go what he called the soft underbelly of Italy. It didn't turn out to be a soft underbelly, but that's why we went in. And uh, we invaded uh, Italy in September of 1943. From that period till the war ended, Italy was a battleground where a lot of people were killed. It had nothing to do with the war. And, um, and, and Churchill pushed for the invasion of Italy, calling it the soft underbelly. The American priority was always France. And we landed in, in uh, Naples and Salerno, and then we were going to go march to Rome. Typically, my uncle was first stationed in Paestum, and they were always bombing up here to stop supplies from getting to the front. But then eventually he moved to Salerno, uh, Salazar, Corsica, which is a French, a French island, and then he was taking trips up here, and when he was killed, I mean, when the pilot was killed, they were going to bomb a bridge in Chisa, and then the plane was hit, and the pilot crashed right here in San Sepulcro. This is Tuscany right up in here, which is, you know, beautiful and in, in, in Tuscany. And where my uncle ended up in a cave is just southeast of Florence. The summer with Germans all around, 
And as the front was coming up, they're watching it from the hill. It's getting closer and closer. And then all of a sudden, the bombs are dropping and the shells are flying and, and that kind of thing. So he's in the middle of that. So that gives you an idea of the chaos. But my uncle was shot down on May 26, 1944. And there was a lot of activity at that time to divert attention from what was going to be happening in northern France. You know, D-Day, Normandy. And there's a lot of books written about D-Day in Normandy. And, and keep in mind, the Americans, that was always their priority. Italy was not their priority. So there's, not, there's no mistake, there are not a lot of books written about the war in Italy until maybe the last 10, 5, 10 years. Uh, Rome, was, Rome was liberated on June 4th, shortly thereafter, and the, um, the general did this, and no one remembers who it is, because two days later you had D-Day, and everybody knows about D-Day. Now, during that summer, my uncle was living in a cave, and uh, he, was, he was liberated on July, 20, July 29th, and Florence was liberated shortly thereafterwards. And then uh, the invasion of southern France took this, when this took place, my uncle was home. It's such a picture of you know, tremendous drama and, and danger in people's lives. I know what service not only to your uncle, but to, you know, to all those who are the military. John has the book. You know, we have it here.